Hey guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Thank you as always for joining me. Thank you also for supporting the show. You guys have done a tremendous job of showing me support, leaving me nice ratings and review and sharing uh, what we're talking about here on social media. And because of that, we are consistently rated and ranked as one of the top Forex and trading podcasts out there. So a big thank you for you guys. If you guys are new and this is your first time stumbling uh, upon the podcast, my name is Akil Stokes. I am a Forex trader, a trading coach, one of the co-founders of tier1trading.com. And if you are someone that is struggling with your trading, here's what I recommend. Head over to our website, www.tier1trading.com. Click that little button that says, I think it says, give me free stuff and make sure you watch that Ascension webinar. I'll put a link to that in the the show notes below, but it's going to do a great job of getting your mind in the right place to become a trader, a consistently profitable trader, I should say. And that's going to be kind of the theme of today's podcast. I apologize for the buzzing noise in the background. My computer's being weird. It's late at night and I just turned it on. It's probably grumpy, but I had something on my mind and it, it came from a message that I got. I just got on Instagram and this is a common message where uh, you know a trader will email me or, or, or send me a message or whatnot and say, hey, Akil, I have a very small amount of money. I've heard everything from like $20 to usually it's in the hundreds, uh, maybe 200 or something like that. What advice do you have for me to start trading? And this may sound mean, and, and for you guys that know me, I, I'm not a mean person, but I am a realistic person, so I'm not going to really sugarcoat anything for you, but my advice is you shouldn't, right? With $200 or $20, you should not start trading, and I, and I don't mean that to offend anyone, but I'm going to tell you why. There's a different perception of money depending on how much money you have. I actually sent a tweet out to someone today saying that when you don't have money, you are concerned with obtaining financial freedom, right? Think about for all of you guys out there listening that are that are maybe have not reached a certain level of wealth or a certain level of financial security, I guess you can say, or financial comfort. Think about back when you were still grinding, right? Everything was money, money, money. I want financial freedom, financial freedom, financial freedom, right? That's the, the big thing. Now, think about what has changed once you've achieved financial freedom. If you're someone that's still on a journey, listen up, because this is going to be important. This will happen to you as well. Once you get past a certain threshold of money, and it's it's essentially that threshold where all of your basic needs are met, right? You're no longer starving. You're no longer eating peanut butter sandwiches and ramen noodles every night or, or, or those those real cheap square pizzas or whatnot, right? Um, <clears throat> where you don't have to worry. You, you're paying your bills. You're not getting kicked out, right? You can live at a a, 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 a level of, of, of not fearing the worst. You're at a comfortable level. You start to notice that money starts to mean less and less. And then once you elevate to the next level where you don't really have to think about what you spend money on, and and before, I I mean it like this, right? You should always think about what you spend money on, right? And I think one of the biggest differences between, not I think, the one of the biggest differences between the rich and the wealthy is that the rich don't think about what they spend money on, right? They have money, so they spend it recklessly, and, and that's why they're kind of always playing catch up. They're rich, but their money never grows. They don't have time freedom or, or they, they don't have a time buffer, right? That's the difference with wealth. Wealth is the ability to sit and do nothing and your money will continue to make money. How long can you last if you do nothing? Rich people are always fighting from behind where they spend a lot, they're in a hole, but they're banking on that next month of payment or that next big project or whatever it is to kind of get them back to where they started. Wealthy people do make decisions about money. Uh, you, you should see me all the time, right? I was complaining the other day, right? I'm a big Premier League fan. Everton is my squad. Great signings this year in 2020 with Alan and uh, James Rodriguez um, and a few others. But they've taken it off the regular cable package and I've got to pay NBC for this thing called Peacock. And it's like $6 a month, right? So obviously it's not a big deal, but it was still a debate in my head. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm very careful, very deliberate about kind of what I spend money on. I don't like spending extra money on stuff because it, it, it adds two bills. It, it It's one step away from, you know, kind of, you know, assets and liabilities and stuff like that, essentially. 
Um, but it was still a bit debate. Now, I ended up getting it because I'm a sports nerd and I don't mind. I value sports and paying for it. But the point was I thought about it, right? I made a financial decision where I kind of weighed the pros and the cons of doing it. And this is something that is $6. You can imagine other stuff like like trips or other type of investments and, and, and stuff like that. But it's it's the mindset that is purposeful. And I, and I think for you guys that are listening to this uh, that maybe don't think that way, this is very important. Because I know a lot of you out there are like, well, Keel, like, what is $6? That's nothing. It's not the point. It's not the monetary figure. It's the idea that, hey, you want to put thought behind your purchases, behind your investments, and not just sporadically buy stuff. Because like a teenager with a credit card where it's like, hey, you got a $10,000 line of credit. If you tell them that, what's the first thing they're going to do? They're just going to spend until that $10,000 $10, is gone. So we, we want to we wanna think about it. Um, and I kind of lost track there. This is what we typically do in this podcast when I go off on rants and I, I don't prep for any of this stuff. I just get on the mic and blah, throw up. Um, but you get to a certain level where you don't have to, you have to, you don't have to, you, you can make purchases. It's, it's not going to hurt you financially, but you still think about it. That was the point there, right? But once you get to a certain level of financial security, once you get to a certain level of, of, of wealth, of income, right? the goal kind of shifts, right? The goal shifts from financial freedom being the most important thing to freedom of time. It's basically a shift of, hey, and I'm using my financial freedom to now create freedom of time. So how can I make the money that I've earned? How can I turn it into more passive income so I don't have to necessarily work the same amount of hours or expand the same amount of energy to produce the same amount of income? And the idea becomes, okay, how can I start automating this task? How can I start delegating this task so I have the same result without the effort? And that's how you achieve freedom of time, which is the ultimate goal, because when you have freedom of time, you have the ability to essentially do whatever you want, whenever you want. And there is, trust me, there is no greater freedom than that. And, and I'm, I'm saying that as an, as an investor, I'm saying that as a father who has two kids and I have the ability to spend time with my kids and, and not miss any of those moments that I hear so many parents complaining about because they can't get off of work to go see their kids play soccer. It is, it, it's, I, there are no words to explain it. You will feel it once you get there. It is amazing. It is worth so much more than money. Trust me. Um, there are things in life that are worth more than money, but it does take money to get to that point. So going back to the fact is that typically when people don't have money before they've got financial freedom and they start valuing other things like time freedom, Money has a, a different pull, right? Uh, a different pull on your emotions because the goal is to kind of jumpstart that, pr that, that process. I need to make money. I need to make money. I need to make money. And that's why we see so many newer traders get into trouble because they're so focused on the money, which we can kind of switch out for the result. When you're focused on the result, you're going to have these emotional pulls. You're going to fall into revenge trading. You're going to fall into entering too early, entering too late, not entering at all. All of the fun stuff because you're 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 kind of blinded by that green beast, right? You're driven by money instead of the the process. And what we always tell the newer traders that we work with is that we have to shift the mindset to process over outcome where the process of doing things the right way, following your rules-based system, right, and, and taking good trades regardless of the outcome is going to be most important. Easier said than done. It's very, very hard to make that mental shift, not just from on the charts, but just trading psychology in, in, in general because it goes against everything we were we were taught in, right, in, in life. I mean, think about it like this, right? When you get a, you hand in a test, right? You get good check marks and bad X marks, right? When you do good, it's a check. When you get the right answer, it's a check. When you get the wrong answer, it's an X. And in the market, it's it's completely different, right? You can do everything right and get the wrong answer or the wrong result. You can do everything wrong and get the right result. So it doesn't necessarily correlate. So it takes a, it takes a while to kind of shift that mindset. But why I tell people to not trade when they have $200 or whatever it may be, a very small amount of capital, is because immediately I know that they're going to go into the market with the mindset of how can I make money really, really quick? And we all know how that ends up, right? They are going to blow their account, whether they are good or whether they are bad. If they are bad, they're going to blow their account just because they're bad. If they're good, they're going to get this false sense of confidence. They're going to think they're better than they are. They're going to over leverage their positions because now all of a sudden when they make that 10% return a month, which is amazing, I will be doing 
naked backflips if I made 10% every month consistently. Trust me, why naked? Because I wouldn't care because I'm making 10% a month, right? But all of a sudden, because 10% a month on a $200 account isn't anything special from a monetary perspective, they want to increase that position size and trade more and trade more and trade more. And all of a sudden, when that drawdown hits, which ultimately it will hit no matter who you are, no matter what your strategy is, no matter how good you are, you will hit a period of drawdown. Now, because you're so over leveraged, you won't be in position to absorb it. Instead, it's going to destroy you. It's going to suck away all your gains, which are either going to leave you broke or it's going to leave you so mentally damaged that you're going to sabotage yourself and, and slowly bleed out. So when you have money, and this is, goes back to kind of the, the wealthy individual or at least people with the wealthy mindset, they tend to be able to think more in percentages because now the monetary figure, right, doesn't really matter as much. It's not really about, okay, $20, $2,000, $200,000. It's all about percentage, 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 return on investment, return on investment. And because it's percentage base, it allows them to not get as pulled in by kind of that, that that need to make a specific amount of money. So that's why we see a lot of younger traders, especially with smaller accounts, get into trouble because they, they I don't want to say they don't know any better, but they're, the monetary figure at that point in time is so important that it's hard to break away from that gravitational pull that will ultimately end to your demise in the market. So what's the solution? Well, it's like I said earlier, don't trade. Well, kill, don't, don't trade. It doesn't make any sense. Well, don't trade dot, dot, dot yet. And this is what I tell the traders all the time. I said, make sure you go about things the right way. The cool thing about trading, um, maybe it's not cool. Maybe it's de depressing, but it takes a long time to get good. This is, we, we had this awesome um, Zoom meeting the other day uh, uh, with some of our traders that have been testing and, and kind of breaking apart and, and re-putting together the strategy that we've been working on for the better part of, uh, I think, almost a year now. And one of the guys in there, he was he was sharing his deal on the strategy, and he mentioned that, you know, um, we teach something called rules-based trading. And, and I always say this, right? If, if you want to know if your system or strategy has clear rules, take it to someone that knows nothing about trading, right? If, if you can take it to your grandma and you organize it and write it in a way that she can understand, there's a pretty darn good chance that your rules are specific enough that you won't get into trouble. Um, so this trader, you know, he, he was explaining some of his rules to his auntie and his auntie says every time he talks to her, he still she still thinks that trading is a get rich quick scheme. And he said to her, he said, look, I've been working on this strategy for almost a year. I think we're way past the point where we know it's a get rich quick scheme. Right. Because I've been, it, it hasn't been quick at all. And it's so true. Right. The typical trader journey and it, it varies depending on. On your 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 previous knowledge coming in, do we have to break you down or are you a blank slate? Obviously, your ability to learn the amount of time you have to invest in learning and practicing, whether you're picking up a strategy that we're teaching and, and just trading it, maybe tweaking it a little bit, whether you're working on something brand new, right? There are so many moving pieces into it. How mentally tough or fragile you are, that's another one as well. But in general, you know, we always say it takes about, takes about 12, uh, really nine to 18 months to become a successful trader. And typically you can imagine about Three fourths of that is actually learning and strategy development and back testing all the, the fun stuff that no one wants to talk about. And then the final quarter of that is just kind of adapting to live trading. So think about when you learned how to drive a car, the difference between learning to pass the tests versus getting out there on the open road. It's a it's the, you know, obviously it, it's you think you're ready, and then when you get on the open road and, and people are zooming by you, it, it takes a while to get adjusted. And that's that final part, 12 to 18 months. So if we know that it's going to take this amount of time anyway, and many of us won't admit that, but I'm telling you, it is, right? It took me two years, right? So I was a little bit longer. <laughs> um, but, and that's after getting educated. It's not even the, the, the Akil dumb period of stuff. But if we know it's going to take us at least a year, let's even put it a year, right? I always recommend this, right? So you, you have a $200 account you're starting with, right? Let's be honest, right? If we were thinking in percentages, it would be cool to start trading with $200 because you'd be okay with percentages. But the fact of the matter is you're probably not. You can probably have a great trading year where you make a 50% return and all you, you start the next year with $300 and you're like, wow, big effing deal, right? So 
you're probably not in the state to mentally handle a small trading account. So during that year that you invest in your education, that you say, I'm putting, I'm putting away a year to learn and train, this is where you start asking yourself the question on the outside, how can I put myself in a more financially stable position? Now, that's going to vary depending where you're at, right? Maybe you've got a lot of debt and you've got to clean that up first. Right. Maybe you have no debt and you just got to save some money. Right. You got to, you know, you got to evaluate your current financial status first. And I I have podcast episodes in the past where I talked about some good methods to doing that. But you got to get your stuff intact first before you start. But let's say you are someone that you don't have a lot of debt. You don't have a lot of bills. um, You just don't have a lot of capital during that year of trading. Dedicate a year of saving. Right. Put your head down and grind for a year, right? Pick up a side job, work more hours at your current job, right? There's always a way to do it. No excuses, right? In, in this time and day, right? This this time and age, I guess you can say, maybe we shouldn't say that with COVID. It's a little bit different, but in general, right? Post COVID or second wave, which you guys overseas are getting hit with. Fortunately here in the US, we are not getting hit with the second wave, mainly because we never got out of the first wave. But um. Bef- put COVID aside, think normal circumstances, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to pick up a part-time job. And a perfect example is like an Uber driver, right? An Uber driver, or for you guys that aren't familiar with, they're basically like independent taxi cab drivers, right? And what they offer, or like DoorDash, someone that picks up foods and, and delivers it to someone, it, it offers flexibility. It's basically like being an entrepreneur or, yeah, I guess an entrepreneur where you can make your own hours. You can say, hey, I'm going to work 24 hours a day driving people around with Uber, or I'm going to work just weekends, or I'm going to work just nights, or I'm going to work on you know days that I have off, right? You can create your own schedule so there's that flexibility in it, so there's no excuse. You can work when you want. But let's say the average Uber driver, and I, was, I remember researching this years ago, so I don't know if it's still true. I think the average Uber driver maybe makes like $150 a month or something like that on average, I think. Um, so let's say that you just dedicate yourself, right, for 12 months. 12 months, you're just going to be an average Uber driver. Um, you guys can do the quick math. It's too late. My brain's dead. Um, but that's going to be over $2,000, right? So now all of a sudden, by the time you're ready to trade, instead of that $200 account, you've got a $2,000, $3,000 account, which allows you to put a much bigger dent in the things, right? It, 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 it's, I don't want to say that with, you know, that that's, it's not a large sum of, uh, of capital to start with, but because it's more, especially where you are coming from, it may allow you to think about things a little bit different and start getting closer to thinking about percentages versus just pure monetary um, amounts. Plus, by that time, if you're doing trading the right way, if you're back testing and doing strategy development and working on a money management and position sizing strategy, you've kind of been taught about the power of percentage, right? You're looking in the future where you're looking at your return on investment, which is a number of percentage. You're looking at how much you have right now. And when you're running the results and you're back testing, because you're back testing thousands of trades, right? You're going over years and years and years and years. You can see the power of compounding where it's like, hey, I started with $2,000 because that's what that's what you assume you'll be starting with. And then you've done 10 years of back testing. And you see by, by, by the end of those 10 years, you're like, holy shit crap, right? I'm going to keep this clean. <laughs> you almost caught me there. You're like, holy crap. Like, how did I turn 2000 into that? And then again, you're just, you, you, you see it, you visualize you and, and you've walked through the process literally bar by bar. And you see what the power of compounding looks like. You see the importance of percentage return and not just a monetary figure. And now mentally you're in a better state to handle kind of the, the, the hardships of, of maybe not of trading not being that get rich quick scheme like you initially thought. But, you know, although that may may be a negative, it's actually a positive because now you're doing things the right way. You're not getting sucked into the junk. So think about it, guys. Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, You know, we'll run the outro music and uh, yeah, that's it. Random, awkward ending, but this is a random, awkward podcast. See you.